Hello, hello, welcome back to Nine Little Aussies. I'm in my kitchen today and I'm going to make um, challah, which is a Hebrew braided bread. Um, I'm just doing a three plat um, because I'm not as skilled at the four plat, which is on my to-do list. But anyway, I make this bread every Friday for a special family dinner that we have on Friday. We all get dressed up and we have a nice dinner and we have challah. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do, I'm reusing this bowl. So just back up a minute. On my on Friday nights, we have a family tradition where we have a special meal. It doesn't, it's not always fancy, but just a special meal that we set aside to, we put a nice tablecloth on. I try to put, light some candles, pick some flowers, and I make this bread. We have whatever meal I'm having that day. Sometimes it's fancy, sometimes it's not. And if I have time, I make a dessert. And it's just a time we set aside as a family to have a special meal together and just relax and enjoy each other's company. So I've got, today I've got um, chicken and dumplings, which I decided this time I would try Jess's recipe from Roots and Refuge. Oh, the farmer's table, I should say. Um, I have my own recipe that I often use, but I thought, oh, just for fun, I'll try Jess's this time. So, and I ate it at her place and it is delicious, but I thought I'd try something slightly different. We've got some elderberry syrup bubbling away. That is going to be broth with the, um, the liquid that I cooked the chicken in. I was gonna do sticky date pudding, but I think I'm running out of time. So I may do caramel popcorn instead. Um, that's kind of my go-to for a quick, easy dessert. And I used this bowl for the dumplings, but it's perfectly fine. I will use it now for the bread. So I will put the recipe for this on my blog and I'll pop a link below for that. Um, but it is six cups of flour, and then I'm gonna activate some yeast to mix in with some sweetener, I usually use honey. You can also use sugar. I've got my little helper, Gracie's gonna help me today. So we uh, have two cups of warm water and I'm gonna put some active dry yeast in there and then I'll add some salt, half a cup of oil, and you can use a mild olive oil. I don't have run out of olive oil, so I'm using avocado oil today, which that works fine as well. Does it taste and good? what else? Two eggs. Two eggs, yeah, two eggs. Two eggs. So the reason we use a mild olive oil, um, Gracie was just asking about that, and I'm asking about the avocado oil. The, you don't want anything with a strong, um, too strong of a taste or it'll really flavor the bread. So I'm just gonna mix in this honey, two tablespoons of honey, into this warm water. It's only just lukewarm. Okay, so I'm doing a tablespoon of yeast. This is a dessert spoon, so I'm gonna add a bit more to get up to approximately a tablespoon. And we'll give that... Can I mix it? I'm gonna have turn. Mixing just a minute. Let me get it off the edges. I'm going to mix that around. It smells, smells good, doesn't it? And let it activate. Can and I mix it? Yep. Yeah, just not too rough, just nice and gentle. Kind of mix in some of these lumpy bits. Break up the lumps. So while I wait, I'm going to wait for that to activate. And in the meantime, we're going to pop in a tablespoon of good salt into the flour. Okay, so you can see this is all foamed up and it's kind of got a bit of a slightly frothy look. That's what we wanted. That means it's activated. I need a half a cup. Yeah, I need a half a cup of oil and my half cup measure has done a runner. So I'm using a quarter cup and I'll do two quarter cups of oil. Do you want to tip these in, honey? I'll put this over here for a yes. 
We need that in just a jiffy. All right, so we need. Can I pull one and you pull the other? Well, you can tip it in ready. So that's one quarter. Can I pour it this way? Well, you can if you're very careful. We don't want to overflow it. Actually, this bottle's almost empty. That's, yeah, that'll do. And a couple of eggs. You want to grab a couple of eggs? Yeah, I love cracking eggs. You love cracking eggs. I'm going to get one, or either one of these. Would that taste me? One of each color? No, they'll taste the same. They'll taste the same. Crack them over here. Yep, that's one. One cracked in. Open it up. Yep, and give me the shell and do the second one over the top of the bowl. All the way open. Come on. All right. I wash my hands now. Okay, you wash your hands. So we have the flour, eggs, salt, and oil, and we're going to pour in the activated yeast and the warm water. Pour that in there. Can I pour it? You can help. Yep. Pour, pour, pour. Okay, although we have this in the stand mixer, I generally mix this particular bread by hand because it's quite a wet dough and um, the dough hooks aren't that effective really. At the end of the day, I always, I, sometimes I go back and try and use the dough hook and I'm like, oh, why did I do that? This is way easier by hand. <laughs> so I'm used, reusing the bowl to minimize dishes, but we're gonna do it by hand. I'll shove this out of the way. You want to start? No, no, this one. You start the mixing with this one. This one. That one's wrong size. Just gentle so it doesn't fly up anywhere. It. Mix it around, incorporate all these ingredients. Getting hot. wanting to make sure all the ingredients are incorporated what and we don't have mean? it just means mixed in oh. like really nicely mixed in so there's no little lumps of flour or egg. yeah or egg or anything like that so I'll show you the consistency it's at right now I'm gonna give that a mix so people can see it's not a stiff dough it it's is quite really hard. To well, mix. it's stiff in that it's kind of hard to stir, but it's not like a kneadable dough. It's quite a bit softer, and it's supposed to be. <sighs> I have an extra helper has just arrived on the scene, and we're adding a tiny bit more flour because um, it was just a I little think... bit too wet. So I'm just trying to get a consistency where it's going to be quite floppy still. It's not going to be um, stiff at all but I don't want it too sloppy. So I'll show you what I mean in just a minute. Okay, I ended up doing what I usually do, which is mixing this by hand. And scrape those off your fingers, Gracie. I had to clean my hands so that I could video and show you what I mean. But it's kind of very sticky. sticky. <laughs> scrape it off your fingers. It's strange. But it's not too loose. It does, it does have some form and you want it to have form because we're gonna plait it. So we want it it's not to have be sticky it. enough where it's still really hydrated, but we don't want it to be um, too wet. So this is about, this is about what we're going for. And clean your fingers off. I'm trying to. So we're gonna let that rise now for about one hour. Okay, while the bread is rising, I'm just popping out here to the garden to water some of the plants um, and honestly just to go outside and breathe for a moment. <laughs>
So this um, tradition that we have of this special meal on a Friday started, it's usually a Friday. We have at different times switched it around to a different day and on Saturday, but generally it's Friday. And it originated um, with friends of ours who we were really close with and spent a lot of time with them and they kept the Sabbath um, and they had this Shabbat meal every Friday night and they invited us along. We went several times and really enjoyed it. It kind of morphed over time into us deciding that we would set aside um, one night a week for a special family meal. We have a nice meal. I make the challah, which I got the challah recipe from um, a different friend actually. So we have been um, having this special family meal now for, um, for years. I wanna say probably at least seven, six or seven years maybe yeah six or seven maybe years and it has just become a family tradition that everybody looks forward to and loves and there are occasions when you know things interrupt it but we do try and prioritize that that tradition that time up set aside for our family so we have this meal i like candles we put a nice tablecloth on try and pick some flowers if there's flowers around we all get dressed up a little bit, play music, dance, sing, and um, have the meal. And then when we break the bread, my husband hands the bread out to everyone with slathered in butter, nice warm hot bread. And before every, the children get their piece of bread, they have to say something that they are thankful for, um, grateful for, that can be something that's happened or something they've done or can be anything. Um, and that has just, that's just our tradition. And then after, so we have this meal together. Sometimes we'll have a candlelight dinner where we've turned all the lights out and only have candles. Um, and sometimes we don't. And then we'll sometimes play some games afterwards, do a read aloud, watch a movie. It varies, but the idea is we just set that, that time aside as family time and it's just become something something really special that our family does that the kids love and when we first moved here to america i got out of the rhythm of doing that for months i didn't have any candles and we didn't we weren't in our own setting i don't know i just it just got it wasn't on my mind i didn't think about it and it was the kids who brought it up to me and said mum why aren't we doing shabbat why aren't we having our special meal our friday night dinner um and they really missed it and they said please can we do that again and it's muggy out here i think we're going to get a storm um so we did we started it back up again and very glad sometimes we're not all there and like obviously our eldest is not here anymore and um our second eldest, who is about to turn 16, um, is not here tonight for Shabbat, uh, for our special meal, because he is, um, he's been invited to a local prom. So he's going to the prom tonight with his friend. And, you know, as they get older, they just have more things going on. They have their own stuff, and that's fine. But we do try and... Um, and he, he usually is here. He usually prioritizes it, but there are, we just go with the flow as they get older and have their things that they've got to do and, and want to do. But that is where this whole thing came from. And it has been, I guess, a deliberate choice of mine as a mother, as a homemaker, to want to create rhythms and traditions that anchor our family, that draw us closer together, that create those memories um, and heart ties that 
hopefully will just um, be special to all the kids. Okay, I totally had to change my, my arm, it's getting too sore. So that is something very intentional. Um, and there are different things that we, different family traditions. So I'd love to hear what your family traditions may or may not be, um, how important that is to you. It is something that um, is a high priority for me as a mum. And my husband's fully supportive of too, he loves it. So it's very, it has been, you know, I didn't realize the impact it was having and the degree to which the children really enjoyed it and appreciated it until we didn't do it. And then they were like, why aren't we doing that? We miss that. We enjoy that. And there's something special too with the fact that we don't get dressed up to the nines. I mean, I'm just in a dress and um, put some earrings in. I will. These are my Jane earrings. My beautiful friend Jane gave them to me in Claremont. Um, put some earrings in and play some music and just let our hair down a little bit and enjoy each other. Yeah. So tell me what your family traditions are. I'd love to hear. Love to hear. I'm going to have to come out and weed this bed. I've been just doing a few weeds at a time every time I walk past. We're supposed to get a storm and I really hope we get a good amount of rain because some of these, I was a bit slack today and I didn't water out here this morning and things are looking a little bit sad. All those weeds that have come up from the hay. They're really easy to pull out, but it's just a matter of coming and getting them. And they're also really easy to identify because I've got heaps of seeds in here. So I want to be careful not to pull those out. Can you help me, darling? Try not to get the dirt. I just want to get a little grass. You like that? We'll have to come out tomorrow, yeah. There's a lot. Yeah, there is. Is that dirt? Yeah, shake the dirt off. Gracie and I are just doing a bit of weeding before we go in. We'll go and check in the bread in a minute and see if it's ready. Um, so we we often the kids will often refer to it as our Shabbat meal, and we do we do try and take a day of rest. It's not we're not we don't strictly observe a full Sabbath like some people do, which is you know that's fine. More power to them. We um. And it, so I guess it's probably a little inaccurate to call it Shabbat, <laughs> but we sometimes call it that because that was the origins of where we were introduced to the idea. And then it kind of just, we, we did it for a little while and then we morphed it into our family's version, I guess. And in our, we do try and take, as I said, a day of rest and it has been on Sometimes it's on, oh, careful, honey. Sometimes it's on Saturday. Sometimes it's on Sunday. Just really according to my husband's work schedule and what is practical. But that's another thing that has been so good. There is always a hundred things to do. And it has been very hard for us in the past to stop and take a day where we don't do anything. And it took... Um, just a very deliberate decision that we're going to set aside that time. We're going to rest. We're going to obviously still water the gardens and tend to the animals. Um, but just, it is, you know, your, our bodies need that recharge, which is, I guess, why the Lord gave the idea in the first place. Um, he knows we need some rest. <laughs> and it's amazing how even though... You know, on paper, it looks like, well, you don't have time to do that. You've got too much to do. But it always works out. It always somehow works out in the end. So we will continue to do that and have our, have our rest day. Okay, it is an hour later and our dough has doubled. It's puffed right up. 
So the next thing I'm going to do is I've got some parchment paper or baking paper. I'm going to pop some oil down here on a working surface and get to braiding. Now it is gloopy and sticky. I just coat my hand in oil and get that gloopy sticky mess out on the counter. And I don't usually try too hard to get it all out of the bowl because I usually have some small people wanting <laughs> the remnants of what's in the bowl. So then I just kind of, right, get that in a basic shape. So both hands nicely coated with oil. And I split this. So I have divided this in two roughly approximately half put one aside i'm going to divide this one into three and i'm never you know i struggle to get it exactly in thirds okay then i'm just going to kind of roll it and kind of squish it into a sausage shape So it's kind of long and then they tend to bounce back, but that's okay. Just gonna make three strands as best I can. Run. You can watch me, baby, but mommy's just gonna do this one today. So I'm stretching them out to be approximately the same length and they do shrink back, but that's okay. It'll all, it'll all pan out, trust me. So then I'm going to do a plait. Actually, there's another interesting thing. <laughs> In America, they're all called braids. In Australia, a three strand braid is called a plait. So I'm just going to plait this um, like so and finish it up at this end. And then I'm just gonna tuck it in at the ends. So that's your braid. And I'm gonna put it over here on this paper. And then do the other one. Let's see. Trying my hardest to get it accurate. Like I said, I'm not very good at, I kind of just go, do they feel the same? I feel like this one's a bit bigger, but just roll that in, make three more strands, just kind of smoothing it and stretching it. It's very elastic and honestly you really need the oil. It is very hard to do this without oil. I have before when I was low on oil, I have done it with flour and that does work. Um, at a pinch, flour will work. See, I think this one is slightly bigger than the other one. So I'm gonna fold, flat that like so, just like you're doing three strands over and over. And then at the end, you just kind of tuck it under to finish it off. And the end. And honestly, if you're, if your strands are uneven, it really doesn't matter. I'm gonna pop this one over here. So we have our braided breads sitting here on the parchment paper. And then I'm just gonna um, quickly add an egg wash onto the top and pop them into the oven. I have preheated the oven at 400 degrees. All right, I'm just gonna pop this little eggy wigs in here. In a little bit. Oops, that's a little bit. Grab 
this. And put an egg wash over here. So as you can see, they are not perfectly symmetrical. One is slightly bigger than the other. That is perfectly normal for me, <laughs> but they taste delicious in the end, so it doesn't matter. So I'm going to pop those. What I do, so you don't have to have this. I have, I, for a very long time, I did not have this, but now I have this little slidey tool, so I slide the bread onto there and then off onto my, um, oh, I think I forgot to mention that. I preheat a pizza stone in the oven and I cook these on a pizza stone. Again, I haven't always had that. You do not have to do that. You can cook it. If you have something with a heavy base, it is better, but I have cooked them before um, lots of different ways. I've even done it in a barbecue when we were traveling around Queensland. I, I did it in a, um, in a barbecue that had like one of those shut down lids. Um, but you could do it on a baking tray. You could do it on a ceramic um, pan. Um, like there's no 100% rule of what you have to do. I do find when I have a hot stone, like a pizza stone, it, um, it cooks more evenly, it rises quicker and it just is delicious, but you don't have to do it that way. So on these pizza stones, one on the top, one on the bottom. Now it will depend slightly on your oven. I'm gonna set a timer for 25 minutes. And that'll probably be enough. I may give it an extra five. I'll just check at 25 minutes and see. I was just thinking one other thing that I do when I have it is I will sprinkle sesame seeds on top of the bread before I put it in the oven. I don't have any at the moment, but sesame seeds are yummy. I have a couple of kids who prefer it without the sesame seeds. It's fine either way. It's just a preference thing, but it's something you could add if you wanted to. Okay, they look about done. Okay, there's our finished bread. We're ready to serve up for dinner. So two of them come out. You end up with two loaves which I love that because we usually have one with dinner tonight and then we have one for breakfast tomorrow, which makes Saturday breakfast really easy. So thanks for coming along with me to make some challah today. Shabbat shalom to you wherever you are. Hope you have a wonderful weekend and we'll see you soon.